Well, hello, friends. Are things looking a little different? <laughs> they might be. Uh, welcome, welcome back to M.E. My Hook and I. It's been a minute. Um, things have been uh, crazy around here, to say the least. So, as the title says, we have some big changes, some big announcements coming. You may have noticed that the name of the channel is now Me, My Hook, and Die, which I don't think I just said in my intro, but ha! Huh? Surprise! We're changing! Um, because I'm really getting into the dying game and really enjoying it, and I thought, well, isn't that cute? Me, My Hook, and Die. <laughs> I think that's what my new yarn line is going to be called. Um, and I will show that um, I, as I was gathering my things to do my, my April wrap up, I gathered the skeins that have died and I was like, by the time I show the projects, tell everything I need to tell in this video, give my wrap up, this is going to be forever long. So I'm going to have a separate video for um, showing off my skeins that I dyed. Um, so what, what do we do in an April wrap up? Well, do you want to hear my yardage counts? Um, I did a lot of very intricate pro projects this month. Um, you know, I was trying to knock out my whip cart. And one of the reasons that I was trying to knock my whip cart out that I did not say yet is that my family and I are moving to Knoxville, Tennessee. Woohoo! Um, so, uh, my husband has a call at a, a, a new, not a new church, but a different church for us uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. And um, through, uh, when you, in the Lutheran Church at least, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America is what we are part of, there is somewhat of an extensive call process where you kind of like date a congregation almost <laughs> and then you get engaged and then eventually you marry each other in the sense that um, they have lots of interviews and then in February we went up and um, people who are on the call committee uh, two people were able to meet him in person, show him the church building. But the, the fun thing about this is that while I am from South Carolina, when I was 14, I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. My husband is from Knoxville, Tennessee, and both of our parents live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and <laughs> we there had been a couple churches that had come open in Knoxville, and through some discernment, we were kind of like, you know what? we're good. We've got a really great church here. People have really rallied around me when I got sick. Let's just stop looking. And literally the next afternoon, because <laughs> God's funny like that, <laughs> we got a call from our Senate office, which is sort of our regional governing body saying, hey, you're from Knoxville. We've got this other church in Knoxville that's now opening. Do you want to interview? And you're like, well, yeah, sure. Like, it can't hurt anything. We're not going to be upset if we don't get it. Like, we've decided we're at peace. <laughs> so after that visit in February, um, the call committee voted, yes, we like this guy. We want to introduce him to the council, which is like the executive body of a church. Sorry for all the politic church things. They interviewed him and were like, yes, we really like you. We want you to become our primary candidate, which is like getting engaged. So things rarely go south after you've determined to be a primary candidate. Um, so then last weekend, we went and officially met everybody who showed up at a meet and greet in person and on Zoom. Socially distanced masks, all that stuff. Fortunately, we're both fully vaccinated now, so that was super helpful. It was a great fit. We all loved each other. Come Sunday, they voted. It was unanimous. And we're moving to Knoxville in four weeks. So, so this month was Operation Let's Get the Whip Cart Done. But also, to show that I was 
uh, very excited about moving back to Knoxville. Part of the yarn that I dyed was an orange, Tennessee orange. Um, so I, oops, I just spilled my seltzer water. It's okay. It's not near the outlet. I won't get electrocuted. Um, so I dyed two different things. So I did this with Kool-Aid and this is the only yarn I'm going to show that I dyed because it has to do with the project I'm about to show you. So I speckle dyed one skein, Tennessee orange with Kool-Aid. And then I sort of totally dyed two other skeins, but I ended up not having to use this one. And I did a virus meets granny shawl, which I had wanted to do for a very long time. And the granny stitches are in the kind of speckled yarn, which is fun because it kind of sort of ended up looking like the Tennessee end zone. <laughs> that's always checkerboard for football. Um, and then the actual virus pattern is with the tonal yarn. And I'm thinking of doing this colorway as a pattern kit thing, not necessarily orange, um, you can suggest colors in the comments, but I'm thinking about doing a kit where I dye yarn specifically like this in other colors. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. So I had roughly, let's see, I used, these are 415 yard skeins of fingering weight and I used 261 yards of the speckle, and I used the whole 415 for the virus. And yeah, I'll have to, um, you can wear it like this, or you can have it kind of draped, wear it artfully. So that was fun. So that was one project that I finished. That's my only one this month that was not a whip. And I finished it on the car ride up to Knoxville for the vote. So that was fun. Got to show a little bit of my personality. Um, the other thing I completed is Ray. So I will try to remember to link these patterns in the description. The Virus Meets Granny. Um, Spider Fiber has a tutorial for that one. And then there's also a free written pattern on Ravelry. And that's what I used. This is Ray from Amor Foo. And... That was for my daughter's Easter basket, but I didn't finish it in time for Easter, so she got a little late. But she's done. She's cute. So that I used. She was entirely made out of the paint box cotton that I love. Lovecraft's affiliate in the description. And then I also made, and I'm not sure if this was for me or for my daughter. We're passing it back and forth. Where did little hat go? This is... I did not sew her hat on. Let me, let me. I actually am just bobby pinning it to her head the way you would if she were a human. This is Anne of Green Gables. Isn't she adorable? This is another Amorphou pattern. And she has a Anne of Green Gables Diana set. You can buy them separately or you can buy them together. So, Diana will be coming soon. But I had, I think, I had the body. I just had the body. <laughs> which is um, kind of a round cylinder done. So, the rest of her I did this month. This one was all Hobby Lobby yarn. So, um, even though Hobby Lobby cotton, I love this cotton, feels softer in the skein. When you make it up into amigurumi, there's really not as big of a texture difference, which is, which is interesting, I think. Anyway, with her little orange pigtail braid, it's wonderful. So, to amigurumi, but wait, there's more because it was the month of amigurumi. Have you been looking at her this whole time? I finally finished Mrs. Dolly Parton. I am super thrilled. Um, once again, I put her off 
because I was scared of the face and the hair. And it was not near as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Um, the hair is actually pale yellow red heart that you brush out with a slicker brush, like a, like a dog <laughs> slicker brush, which is very similar, but way cheaper than a carding brush. A carding, I guess there's carding machines, carding boards and carding brushes. Um, anyway, and that gives this, and then I took a flat iron and a curling iron to her hair to give it some shape and cut her some little bangs. And that is actually um, palette pastels, but I think that you could probably use regular old blush if you wanted to. Um, and I blind her up because it's a dolly. Uh, this pattern is crafty, is cool. And um, yeah, I mean, it just wasn't as difficult as you'd think it would be. Now I had made another, I had made Mr. Rogers earlier and I have gotten much better at keeping my stitch definition even and not overstuffing. And in that regard, she's probably higher quality than anything else I've, I've made as far as like just learning the basics of amigurumi and getting things to shape the way. She's poseable so you can straighten her legs. You can put her guitar in her arms if you want. You can turn her neck. Um, and that wasn't hard either. So if you think these are intimidating, well, okay. If you don't like working with a mini hook, you may not. I think I used a 3.25 on most of it. And then a B hook, whatever that is. I think that's 2.75 on her fingers. And honestly, I don't think that the fingers add quite as much for what it was worth. The fingers were fiddly. Um, her other patterns just have like basically a mitten uh, with a thumb for the hands. And I, I think I'd probably do that in the future. I don't, <laughs> I mean, they were just fiddly and I just don't know that the effect was worth the time and effort that I put into it. But anyway, I, I did go down and, and write down the yardage for all of this. So I will have my total yardage count. But let me tell you, when I agreed to do that at the beginning of the year, I did not think about <laughs> how many small balls of color and things that I'd be using for amigurumi trying to keep count of what's left on the skein <laughs> for when I go use it the next time. Um, yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And then my next one was the Crochet Society slippers. If you remember the box that was recycled, this is the first pair of slippers slash socks that I've made. <laughs> and I made the mistake of making the one, letting a lot of time go by and making the second one and not remembering exactly which hook I used. Switching different, like I use totally different tension when I'm working with a fingering weight yarn on my shawl and stuff like that than I do for this. So this slipper ended up being like an inch and a half longer. Um, I think I somehow have extra rows or maybe deleted rows from this one because I have a small foot and forgot to take notes to tell myself, by the way, you didn't do all the rows. So I didn't finish the lamb ears and the embroidery on this because like, what am I gonna do with two different size slippers? So eventually this is gonna go live in my crochet society box. And eventually I will probably rip these out and make a different project from the magazine but technically these are finished to the degree that I'm going to finish them so they're counting as my yardage for the month and then I'm all caught up with my crochet society boxes because I made uncle the owl and she's adorable oh she is everything I wanted her to be and more there she is. <laughs> She's just the cutest. 
I have never made amigurumi with chunky yarn before. And then I held, I had some leftover silver, um, what is it, Aunt Lydia's thread from Dolly's kit. So I put a little silver thread in there for his wings, these cute little lacy star wings that just make the owl. Um, and I love that it's got the sparkles in it. I don't know why I just went to a kid's voice on that, but super pleased. She is very cuddly because she's made out of such soft, bulky yarn. Um, I would absolutely make this again in different colors. So I'm super glad that Bella Coco does the, or that Sarah does the um, yarn suggestions in the book so I can make more of these and get the proper weight in. Um, this was Bella Coco's Tea Time Chunky. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, I love the way she turned out. Super excited. So, that concludes all my makes for the month. Plus, okay. So, my total yardage was 1,687. And that's down from 1,800 last month. However, that was a lot of amigurumi to do in one month. So I'm, I'm not, and I dyed yarn. So I'm not hating, I'm not hating my totals this month. But y'all, I did not realize I had so many new subscribers. I mean, cool. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, in March, I was at, see, if you have a YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do this because the numbers don't go anywhere for a really long time. And you feel like, is anybody even really watching <laughs> these videos that I'm putting so much time and energy in and having so much fun with? Like, is anybody actually, but yes, I love tracking it every month. So like, I didn't have very much growth between March and, I mean, between, what is that, February and March? But last month, when we wrapped up March, I was at 583 subscribers. And when I wrote down my stats last night, I was at 690. I mean, thanks guys. <laughs> that makes the girl feel special. Um, but it also makes me kind of nervous. Please stick with me. Um, things might get a little less frequent um through the move also we are moving into my in-laws house which is a good thing i love my in-laws i know for some people that might be a, a nightmare but my and i i hit the jackpot with with in-laws in fact um because i am so dependent on a single level house for my energy <laughs> my need for walking short distances without passing out kind of thing. Um, I can't, I can't really use stairs in my daily life. Um, my in-laws are surrendering their bedroom on the main floor for the first, I mean, for however long it takes us. Uh, you may know across the country, the real estate market is nuts. And so I cannot express my gratitude for how that is going to make this the least stressful move it possibly could be. Um, in fact, uh, I believe my daughter and I are gonna move up over Memorial weekend with a couple suitcases. And then my husband, bless him, and, and you know, probably members of the congregation. Not that I wanna commit y'all to anything, but they're just, they're great people. They'll probably show up and, and help him load a truck or something. Um, he'll pack it up so, yeah, um, hopefully that'll keep the toll on my health to a minimum so I can keep crocheting, so I can keep doing these videos, so I can keep dying yarn. This is the corner of my room though, so I don't, I'm not sure, we'll have to figure out how I'm gonna record my videos um, and where I'm gonna record my videos and where I'm gonna stash my yarn and how much yarn is gonna come with me and how much yarn is gonna go in store. <laughs> Because already I've put away two totes of yarn 
and I've had to reach into it twice. <laughs> I just put them away like three weeks ago. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, oh, I'm, while I'm wrapping this video up, I forgot I have one acquisition, you know, cause I'm trying to get rid of yarn. Uh, comfy cotton was on sale at Joann's for $5.99 a ball. I'm digging my cotton sweaters for the summer. So let's just make it harder to work that whip card down. But I have to say after, after the whips that I finished today, I still have Gravity the Triceratops and the Velvet Cardi and the In the Car shawl. That's probably gonna end up being a Christmas present. So I only have three whips right now. Well, that's not true. I have a couple blankets, but I don't know. Doesn't everybody just have a couple blankets that they periodically work on? Here and there. Anywho, um, I'm gonna go so I can record my yarn dyeing expeditions. And um, yeah, let me know. Well, you can tell me on the yarn dyeing video what you think and um, what colors you like and if you'd be interested in buying some yarn on my Etsy. I'm also going to link my Mercari. <laughs> um, I am selling uh, some of my daughter's clothes, some of my husband's clothes, some accessories, like jewelry, jewelry and stuff. Um, if anybody's interested, <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of things and everything that I am selling from yarn to the things on Mercari are hopefully going to go to my craft room fund whenever we happen to buy a house. <laughs> so we got to sell this one and then, you know, whatever. Um, so I am stashing money to make an epic YouTube studio slash yarn room. All that money will go directly back into the channel. So, um, check it out and I'll see you guys soon.